Thank you again everybody for being here today for this uh, seminar, for this periodic seminar. Today we will have Fabio talking about the, a module for FFT-SE protocol in NS3. FFT-TE is uh, a combination of uh, the flexible crime trigger with um, uh, the master slave techniques. So he has around 40 minutes to end it and us. Good morning everyone, thank you for coming. Uh, I will start with the presentation of, of, the, of the work I have done in internship here in Sister. Uh, the project has a name, uh, a model for FTT SC protocol for NS3 simulator. I will start to, to talk to you about the motivation of the project talk about uh, the flexible time trigger system tournament protocol uh, to show you uh, the main concepts of, uh, of uh, the simulator NS3 uh, present you the, the approach that I have done for, for the implementation of the model show you some results uh, of simulations that I have done to study the, the behavior of the protocol uh, the model includes also the the communications uh, following the first join parallel distribute distri distribute paradigm, and uh, I will finish with the conclusions and the future work. About the motivation, in the last years we have seen uh, an increase uh, of the use of the of embedded systems that uh, that use. Uh, real-time applications such, such as uh, automotive uh, applications and uh, those applications uh, uh, are becoming to, to, to be more, com more complex and larger so the, uh, those, uh, those ones require more, more bandwidth and more uh, computing power in the, the figure on the right, we can, we, we, you, can, you can see an example of the using of automotive applications. Uh, you can see several SEUs connected by two switches. The flexible time trigger protocol uh, provides site bandwidth for the, the communications of real-time applications and uh, uh, the protocol allows uh, the, th the transmission of both tra uh, types of traffic, synchronous traffic and asynchronous traffic. I will talk uh, about the, the flexible time trigger switch in the Ethernet protocol, the main concepts. It's an adaptation of the flexible time trigger Ethernet that works, uh, which works in, in a bus topology with, uh, and uh, uh, has to lead with uh, collisions. Uh, the protocol follows the master slave pattern where the master nodes uh, manage all the traffic exchanged by the slave nodes. The communication, the FTTSC protocol, uh, is organized uh, in a prefixive time slots called the elementary cycles, and each EC each uh, starts with the master sending uh, in broadcast for uh, all the slaves a message uh, called trigger message. That message uh, includes in the payload information about all the traffic that will be set, will be uh, transmit in that uh, elementary cycle. The protocol allows bandwidth warranty for different types of, uh, of traffic and uh, with the switch Ethernet we can have uh, full duplex links which avoid the collisions. I will present to you uh, now the, the elementary cycle. Uh, in the EC we have two main windows, synchronous window and asynchronous window. In the, asyn in the synchronous window we can transmit synchronous message that, uh, is, that are uh, periodic message to, uh, uh, which means that uh, they are um, uh, time triggers. Uh, 
and the, uh, the transmission is based in the period defined for the total message. In the asynchronous window, is, is, trans, is trans, transmit the, the asynchronous message and the best effort messages. Uh, those, those messages have, to have a, uh, are, are event trigger, which means that uh, the slave nodes uh, have to, 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 to make a petition for the master node to transmit the pending message in the in the in the node. Uh, there are two more uh, windows: the guard window uh, that uh, is used for uh, reservation, reservate the bandwidth for the transmission of the trigger message, and the turnaround window uh, is used for the slave node uh, to to have time to decode the trigger message. The card window plus the turnaround window form the signaling window that is used for the petitions of, uh, uh, of the uh, uh, asynchronous applications. Those petitions uh, is used in the signaling mechanism. How it works? Uh, uh, asynchronous application, uh, if uh, if it has uh, as, uh, a pending message, after, after receive the trigger message, has to send to the master a signaling message uh, that include information about, uh, about the matches that are pending to transmit. So in the next elementary cycle, the master will consider that message in the scheduling process. Uh, now I will talk about uh, how the scheduling is done uh, in the in the master node. Uh, the master uh, has a database with two tables. The SRT uh, store information about synchronous message, and ART store information about uh, a synchronous message. I will talk only. Now about the synchronous message. The master scan all the, the SRT in order to find uh, which message are pending to transmit. In order to... Uh, and uh, uh, that, uh, that scan is based in, the, in the, the period defined for each stream. The streams uh, and message that uh, that uh, is available to, to transmit are pending. The, the master includes them in a ready queue uh, that uh, after uh, is sorted by the by the by priority for for instance uh, by the rate monotonic policy. Uh, here we have an, an example with a mass, uh, with the slave A uh, transmit message to the slave B and crosses switch one and switch two. This line is uh, represent the, the link between the slave A and switch one. Here we have the link between switch one and switch two. Here we have the link between switch two and switch B and uh, the slave B. The the process of scheduling, uh, the master uh, uh, verify uh, one by one uh, uh, message or stream that uh, is uh, stored in th this ready queue and verify if it can be transmitted in all the links that uh, will be crossed and th that message has to fit in respective window, in this case, switch uh, synchronous window. In this example, we have a message one and message two that can fit in all the links uh, uh, in the synchronous window. But the message three in the link between switch two and slave B don't fit the synchronous window. So th this message don't uh, doesn't uh, can be. Uh, schedule in this elementary cycle, so 
it's still it's still pending for the next elementary cycle. In the in the case of the uh, asynchronous uh, streams, uh, like I said, the, the process is the, is the, is the same, but only the the streams that uh, that. Uh, only the streams that uh, the slave make a, a petition is considered for the scheduling uh, process. Now I will talk about the, the simulator NS3. So the simulator is, act, is currently in the third version and is the network simulator uh, that is used in the research and development. It's mainly developed and uh, C++ uh, language, uh, but uh, um, also can be executed um, uh, Python scripts. It's an open source project, it's free, and uh, it can be used in uh, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, uh, X uh, uh, operating systems. Uh, it's based in uh, discrete events, which means that there is, the, in a simulation, there is a list of events. When the, the simulator uh, finishes an event, it starts immediately to, to execute the next, uh, the next event. It has also tracing mechanism that helps the user to, to understand what's happening in the simulations. Now I'll talk about, uh, uh, about the, the work uh, and implementation of the flexible time triggers which is a net model. Uh, you can see here uh, a, a simplified class diagram. In the, class, in the white classes, uh, uh, the, the white classes are the NS3 the classes and the gray classes is the, the classes that was created for, the, for this project. We have to focus on the, on the application class. The application class is uh, an interface for all the applications in the, in the NS3. And, uh, 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 and the approach of this project is uh, application level. So uh, we have to extend the class application and uh, to, to create FTTSCM master that uh, simulate the work of a master application and uh, FTTSCS slave that, uh, which uh, simulate the work of a, a slave application. Uh, both, uh, both applications uh, include a database that stores uh, FTTSCS streams that, uh, which uh, define all the characteristics of a stream in the FTTSC protocol. The class uh, task is used to, to model a uh, concurrency of task uh, and the FTTSC helper uh, it was created to help the user to configure the network. I'll talk about the implemented features. Uh, in, this, in this work, uh, in this work, we have a helper, like I said, to, con to help the user to configure the network. Uh, there is a plug-and-play scenario that, uh, that allows to resist uh, all the streams in runtime. And uh, the master node is, uh, is responsible to, to, to make the, the traffic scheduling uh, of, the, of the network according the rate, mon rate monotonic algorithm. Uh, the result of the of the traffic scheduling is uh, is um, included in a trigger message that is sent uh, in the beginnings of each elementary cycle. Uh, the implementation allows uh, bandwidth guarantee for both types of, of traffic, synchronous and asynchronous. The, the implementation also includes uh, uh, the communication following the fork join parallel distributive, uh, where is used uh, where is uh, used the concurrency modeling 
in a single car uh, distributed nodes. <coughs> For the, in order to, to understand who better uh, the results, we have uh, an export uh, um, model uh, that, uh, that stores all the response times of each, uh, each stream. Uh, that allows the user to, to make some plots and, uh, and graphics uh, and uh, understand who, what's happening with each stream in the network. I will talk about uh, some simulations that, that was done with the implementation and uh, uh, analyzed the, the results. In this uh, example, uh, we have a tree-based topology with several nodes uh, and links uh, uh, with uh, uh, 100 megabits per second capacity. Uh, and uh, for these uh, simulations, uh, we used asynchronous applications. For example, we have uh, application uh, U1 that send uh, uh, that send traffic from control node to control process unit. We have uh, application new three that sends traffic sorry, between uh, add unit node and RSE node. We have uh, here we have uh, the characteristics of uh, two experiments. Uh, the first one we have defined uh, asynchronous window. Uh, to 50% of the capacity of the, of the elementary cycle. In the second uh, experiment, we, we have uh, uh, a synchronous window defined to 30% of the capacity of the elementary cycle. Uh, what, uh, what we have to, to, to compare is uh, the, the influence of the reduction of uh, uh, this window uh, and verify uh, what happens uh, with the response times of, uh, of the applications with lower priority. Here we have uh, uh, several applications. Uh, we have to focus on the application 3 which uh, have a period of uh, 24 uh, ACs. The period is defining the number of ACs. Uh, and uh, according to the rate monitoring policy, uh, the application uh, new three is the low, uh, is the, the application with lower priority. Uh, so I will show the results. Here we have the results uh, with uh, a synchronous window defined to to fifty percent, and. Uh, the application uh, new 3 have a, an average of response time of uh, uh, 37 hundreds around uh, and, um, and uh, a maximum value of uh, around 44 hundreds and a minimum of 30, uh, 32 hundreds. Compared to the, the experiment with lower, uh, lower um, reservation of the asynchronous uh, window, we we can we can see that uh, the response time increases a lot. Why why uh, this is happening? Because with lower uh, bandwidth per, per uh, elementary cycle, m more time have to to be have to be taken to the transmission of all the message of, of all uh, all sides of the message uh, of this stream. Uh, Now I will talk about the, the fourth joint parallel distributed par uh, paradigm. Uh, here we have a, a figure that uh, uh, that explains uh, in detail uh, the model, but uh, in general, uh, in this paradigm, uh, there is an, uh, a local node that uh, that. Uh, uh, process a task locally 
and uh, then have to, to send uh, to remote nodes in the distributed way uh, that uh, have to process remotely the other tasks and then the result of this process uh, results in response message that uh, will be sent back to the local node but uh, there is uh, there is a difference uh, uh, of computing of this uh, paradigm uh, between the asynchronous applications and the synchronous applications why because using asynchronous applications like i said before uh, the messages uh, are transmitted based on uh, petitions made uh, by the, the slaves uh, for a pending message so we have uh, the, 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 this, uh, th this uh, represent uh, the link between the slave one and switch and this represent the, the, the link between switch and, and the FTP slave two the FTP slave one have a pending message so have to, to, to signal this message and the next elementary cycle so the, it, uh, it will transmit the message when the message uh, um, arrive in the remote node uh, there that, that, that is a, a, a processing of a task that result in a, 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 in a response message so it, uh, it has to, to, to signal this, uh, this pending message in the next elementary cycle so the, the FTT slave 2 can transmit those message, uh, that message in case of synchronous applications uh, the, the messages are periodic so we have to, to compute the worst case response time of the transmission of the message and the, 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 processing, uh, the processing of the task in the remote node why? because we have to synchronize the application in the, the application in the slave uh, in the slave 1 and the slave 2 in order the response of the slave 2 uh, never uh, can be transmitted before the, before the all the process uh, finish and so the response is always uh, always um, be transmitted in after the worst case response time here we have uh, an, an example using this uh, this paradigm uh, we used uh, synchronous applications uh, we have also a uh, tree based topology. Uh, the, the multimedia node um, has to transmit in a dis distributed way uh, traffic to control uh, 1, control 2, control 3, and control 4. Uh, so, in the remote uh, side, we have an execution that generates a, a responsive message. Uh, that will, will be sent uh, um, after that we have the characteristics of uh, the experiment uh, in this experiment we uh, have a variation in the number of threads used for, for this, uh, this communication we have a synchronous window defined to 50% of a capacity of, uh, of the elementary cycle <coughs> and we have also several applications the, uh, the, the application TAU1, TAU2, TAU3 and TAU5 are uh, sequential uh, applications and uh, the, the application TAU4 is a distributed uh, it's a parallel uh, application and we have to focus on on that application I will show I'm showing the, the results we used uh, um, an experiment with 8 threads and 16 threads 
we can see that the uh, application TAU4 uh, with more uh, threads uh, in, the, in the experiment reduce the, the average of uh, response time. Why? Because um, with more threads we have to split the size of the message in, uh, in more chunks so it's more uh, easier to, to fit more message in a single elementary cycle. I'm going to finish with the conclusions. Uh, the contributes of the work, uh, we have the first implementation of the uh, FTTSC protocol in the NS3. Uh, we have applications in the end of the, of the protocol. The communications uh, can use the fork join parallel distributed paradigm. Uh, we, have, we have modeled the task processing uh, in a single core uh, node. And model to export the response times uh, of each uh, element of each stream, uh, and we have to, to, to and uh, we we have done simulations and uh, study the, the behavior of the of the protocol, and about future future work. Uh, it's in process the, the integration of the model as a main branch of the NS3. Uh, it can be, uh, it can have uh, multicast communication and an admission control mechanism. And thank you for your attention. Now we have time for some questions. Yeah. So, uh, thank you for your presentation. My question is about how you validated the, your model. So, did you, uh, what you said makes sense, okay, from my perspective, but how did you validate your results? Did you compare it to some other simulator with some other model? How did you make that? Yes, uh, firstly, uh, um, uh, I have to compare it with, um, with the real implementation. Uh, the results of uh, using the real implementation and uh, also uh, we have compared the results with the theory uh, the main validation is that it, it's using the, the theory uh, behind the protocol and that's it so uh, in the first plot you showed, there was some difference between you had minimum and maximum and average. Where is the source of variation in your in these? Okay. about the it's related to the signaling mechanism because uh, we don't know uh, when uh, when a, a synchronous message we don't know when the messages are generated so the response time is measured uh, from the, the instant the message is generated until the instant that uh, that message arrives in the, the remote node so the, the, the computation of a synchronous uh, message we, we have uh, done um, we have simulated this variety uh, applying a random time for generating uh, the message because we don't know when the, when the message are generated so but because the variation the, this is response time right? yeah so the variation is only because of the phasing so a message arrives and it might be immediately sent or not might or yeah. must not be immediately sent because of the phasing of the communication, right? It goes to the queue and so on. Yeah. So that is why there is very and, and, uh, and the interference and between the, the message uh, of all the the all the yeah, sure. But the main uh, the main reason
reason is that it's about the, the random time that the, the messages are generated. Because it so I have two, two questions. So one, once I heard that, uh, what kind of hardware is used to, for this, the switches? Uh, sorry? The, you, you use switches, no? For this? Yes, yes. What kind of hardware is it used for this? It's a... Uh, it's a generic one. It's a, it's a, a, a single the switch. The, the okay, because once, for example, I heard that um, the cues in, in the switches, in real switches, would not behave uh, very well if you had lots of, of messages in the ports. It would sometimes not respect priorities, and so is this an issue here? Or? Uh, uh, we, are, uh, we, we have not to consider that because uh, we assume that th that interference uh, doesn't exist. And then the other question is, okay, so then if you, what is exactly the simulation for? Because couldn't you just get these from uh, analytical results? Because all you have here is basically from the phases, right? And that you can... Is this very different from the maximum values you get in the response time? Uh, basically, it's, you compare this with the analytical results. Yes. How different is it? Compared to the theory, the results are, are that we expect. The, so that way we validate the, the yes. results. But you have th those values there, that's what Nuna is asking. No, no. It's For okay. this scenario, do we have the, the worst case response? Uh, I'm, I'm no, no, what, what I'm like asking now is, is, okay, so now what, what are you going to do with the simulation, basically? What are you going to do with the simulation model? I think that's a question for Ricard, not for you. Are you thinking about extending yeah. or increasing the number of nodes and that is why you need a simulation? I'm just maybe putting, putting maybe putting some random variables there. Yes, something like that. Maybe also to the system. Related to, yeah. related to the queuing, I mean, that's the function of the protocol itself. I mean, because if, to, to if, uh, if, if all your model is very deterministic, uh, uh, unless, the, for example, the response time is very pessimistic and you wanted to find out how pessimistic it is and stuff like that. Uh, if it's very deterministic, you, you are probably better off with, uh, with uh, an analytical model, no? Thing is that look, uh, Only when things start to get complicated, maybe you have some randomness there, yeah, maybe the, there is some more, yeah. then you want to. Yeah, well, one of the points is that it's uh, an extreme module, so it can be used uh, in complex uh, system modules. So mm -hmm. you can start having, for example, uh, this kind of time trigger data net, and uh, after that, uh, in order to can also talk uh, via ZigBee, for example, on the protocols. Okay, so so to build right. a so system with the interaction. Yeah, of exactly. So to see what happens, what's uh, the difference uh, on a uh, long transmission over the multiple uh, technologies, if we have a normal Ethernet or a, a technical Ethernet. Okay, and we also want uh, everybody to use the modules so uh, we can tables uh, and... Uh, <laughs> 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 and that's why, uh, that's why it's an ST module, because uh, uh, it can help uh, more researchers to start using it. Mm. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not trying to put you in a video. I'm just making questions for me. I have one final, <laughs> I have one final <laughs> comment on. Uh, can you put the last spots you showed? No, no, can I? Yeah. yeah. Related to you mentioned something about the 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 queues, no, in the yeah. uh, switches in the switches. So basically, this version of um, what we compare with of the real implementation is a software-based <coughs> implementation, which. Um, um, <coughs> implements this uh, master entity. And this master entity is in charge of making the scheduling of the messages in the system. Mm. So the idea there is like, since you have like some bandwidth reservation, the master will tell you which messages will be able to be sent in that specific time window. Right? So this eliminates the problem of the 
of the queues because let's say you will send a petition and the master will be in charge so of there making is the arbitration in the transmissions in the system, right? So there are at the switch you never have the mention. No, because you only send the messages like uh, can you send uh, show the the figure with the no, okay. invitation. You're saying that there, are, there is no contention. Exactly, because the thing is that you will send like petition to the master either if it's periodic or, yeah. or by request, mm -hmm. and then the master will make the schedule for that uh, for that let's say space and time. Right. So therefore, you will only transmit when it's your turn. So you will not have collision. Which is the uh, intention of the protocol itself. Right? So that means that the thing is very deterministic. Exactly. And then, so related to the, um, the analytical tools, uh, for instance, the response time itself in the network is really pessimistic. Right? I mean, because in this case, I mean, this is like a, a part of the network that we are using to build a larger system. Right? So, as you know, like for instance, we may have some estimation. And the worst case with analytical tools, which all the time will be pessimistic. But in the case of the network, it's even more pessimistic because you can. That's, that was not his answer. He said that things were. Yeah, that's it. But I'm okay. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, indeed, I mean, it, it's in line. Why? Because the response time that we show in the real it's, simulation it's less. is less than the worst case response time. Yeah, so it's far. From yeah, it's far. It's far. Okay. And the thing that is like, especially in the network, is really complex because there are a lot of assumptions you have to do when you're computing the response time, right? Mm -hmm. Like for instance, you will have in the in the in the switch, you will have FIFO queues, right? So you will not know which message will arrive first. You may have like some mm -hmm. uh, priority inversion. So therefore, the time you have to consider the worst case in this scenario that is sort of impossible to check uh, something which is not that pessimistic. So yeah, the answer is is far. Uh, no, the last ones, the final ones. You had after that, you had some more thoughts. Yeah, that those ones. So you had no variation in this simulation. In the yeah, a, a little simulation. Uh, in these ex experiments uh, with uh, the sixteen threads. Uh, we have to split the message uh, in more chunks, more than small. My, my, I'm just saying for the way you present it. Okay. Uh, so either your, so your, what you do with the simulation, it's an experiment. Okay. Yes. And either the experiment is deterministic, which means that it always gives the same value. The, yes, because. Or, or your experiment has some type of random behavior. And in that case, you need to show me something about the distribution of that random behavior. So you, you see, like when I see the simulation results and I don't see error bars, I get suspicious. Okay. So, yes. uh, and so uh, in these experiments, we use synchronous, uh, synchronous application. Oh, okay. uh, uh, like I said in the presentation, the synchronous applications using the Fortran parallelism groups, so we have to, to compute the worst case response time for the, the computation of the transmission of all messages and the, the, the processing of all tasks in the, in the node. So, if uh, the worst case response time is always the same, the, the variation mm -hmm. is uh, there. Mm -hmm. So not that's existent deterministic. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. If it is synchronous, it's completely deterministic because you know exactly when you are going to make the transmissions of, of the forks and joins of the messages. So. In fact, only the synchronous case, there are variations, okay? And you can put variations on the period, correct? Yes. And on the execution time, yes. on, the, on the foreign node. Yes. Yes? That's the two variations that you can do. I think that those variations are not 100% on those simulations that we are putting there, right? Yes. The ones that were before, that's why Nuno was asking. About those variations no, and distributions and so on. I didn't understand. Okay. What yes. What can I? Yeah. The thing is, in that, in this case, you have a synchronous system, right? So what we do is like, in order to know when to transmit, imagine you have like a fork, and then you will send a message, and then when you send a join, you have to send another message, right? So we have to compute the worst case response time of these events that are in so the past in order to know when you already had in a, an analytical model. Yes. 
Yeah, this is more like because we don't have variations there because again, like you mind, you are going to send a message for the join part. So you have to compute the worst case response time of the previous events in order to know a specific time when you will send that message back, right? So everything is synchronized. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, it may be the case that in the simulator the message will be ready for transmission, but since you are synchronizing, then you will wait. So the message is like stopped, right? But in this figure, what is interesting to see is that therefore is the same uh, load. So you have like this response time, which is like 80, uh, 8300, right? Like in, in, the, in the figure above. And then the other one is like 8200. 80, sorry, 800. So the idea there is like, it's interesting to see like uh, although the threads have the same load to process and the size of the messages is the same, it's just like it's subdivided, right? It's like smaller pieces. Like since you have like this reservation for transmission, if the messages are smaller, that means that like, you will have more facility to accommodate the messages and to be transmitted in, in, in less elementary cycles, right? So this, this becomes reflected on the final response time of the full application. But what, I mean, okay, you have different number of threads, but what do these threads want? I didn't understand that. Again, look, the thing is, you have, let's say, eight threads in the first one, 16 in the second one. Right? So what does uh, each thread process? That's what I don't understand. Look, yeah, there's more or less than this figure. For instance, you, what you will do is that you will generate, uh, you have some load to process, and you will distribute it. In this case, we are just having like some, um, even distribution, you know, we don't have any algorithm behind. What we want to show is like the impact of the network over the, the final response time of the application. Okay. So let's see here, you will send like uh, chunks to these four processors. So in the first case, if you have eight threads, you will send two, two, two. Right? Okay. Okay. So in the other, if you have 16, you will send four, 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 and four. Okay. So the load is exactly the same. You just divide it the same as other chunks, right? Okay, which is really represented like what your center is. So that means that each uh, node will process, so in the first graph, so each node will process like two threads. Exactly. Okay. So, what is interesting, uh, what's interesting in the plot is like you have 8 and 16 threads, so therefore the message is associated to each thread. If, the, if you have more threads, the message is smaller. True. Right? So, since the message is smaller, then there is more easy to accommodate uh, these messages to be transmitted in the bandwidth you have associated to that, uh, that configuration, okay? Mm -hmm. So, therefore, the final response time gets uh, reduced as well. So, you process the same load, but since there are smaller, let's say, more threads than smaller load, then you can accommodate more in the same amount of time. Because in that case, I would expect, I mean, probably I'm wrong, but I would expect that the response time with 16 threads would be uh, a lot less, let's say, in the three or less than the, the one in eight. Because when you compare the results, I mean, you just decrease like 300 microseconds when you double sure. the number of threads. It's like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just an experiment. Yeah, I know, but I mean, I would expect that the response time would be. No, because you use the same, you use the same number of, of processors, you see? Like, imagine, like, uh, yeah, you have. You have interference, then you have uh, you divide, you have two, pro two processors. Forget about the network now. Okay. Then you have the same the same load, but you divide in four threads or in two. So, so you will take the same because you are you are evenly even. So in the know. real in the real world application, actually, you would have a higher response time because you are using more threads. Probably the overhead is possible. To increase the response possible. Time. Possibly, but but what is the purpose of this uh, sample and maybe it okay, should be enhanced, right? Okay, because this this, uh, mm -hmm. this just came out of you know some example, but for sure for different values you will see depending on the size of the messages that the thing become uh, okay. bigger. And again, which is more important in this case is that uh, this small difference of the response time, maybe the difference between uh, deadline miss or deadline. Uh, yeah, sure. One last question. Then I will put one. Like, uh, why did you choose to 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 implement the red monotonic at the master node? I mean, because we have phasings, right, among messages, and uh, red monotonic is not not to be optimal for. Sure. Um, in this case, it was a decision. Of, like, first, we just uh, for this is purposes. We are working with. Um, 
is paid. Okay. We could have chosen the monotonic, but uh, it's independent. Uh, it's like a matter of one hour of changing. Okay, instead of using like the periodicity, you will use the deadlines. That's it. I mean, it's just uh, by preference. I would say there is nothing uh, behind that. But it's it's implementable. And as the idea of this of this uh, module that you, if you mind, you want to use some um, deadline uh, EDF arbitration, then you can just go and change the small model, and then you will have. At the end, the sorting of the of the messages in the master node according to any policy you want to implement. So it's not static. You can, I mean, the idea is like, okay, we provide this, but you can implement. Uh, and this is something that you plan to do in the future, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Done.